This will be a little bit about the uh, the history of psychopathy in government. Um, this latest uh, no money for the American government thing has uh, hopefully brought the fact that uh, the United States of America Corporation doesn't have any money uh, to the front. Of its uh, operation, it's uh, a British corporation, and all the tax money that uh, Americans pay goes to the owners, the British corporation. So there's no money, and for a hundred years they've been uh, asking the privately owned Federal Reserve to print more paper money to fill in the gap. Uh, I think it's just. Uh, Quite humorous. Uh, when I was a little bitty historian uh, in the early 60s, they, uh, one of the things I learned was America, United States of America, was two and a half percent of the world's population and they had 50 percent of the wealth. And uh, it's changed a little bit now. They're five percent of the world's population and they have a little bit less wealth, but not too much less. Um, after the uh, export of all the manufacturing jobs out of America to the third world, what was left was intellectual property that was how uh, America was maintaining its standing. But uh, now the uh, Chinese have managed to be able to get most of that through computer hacking and, and that will end pretty soon. So the United States of America will be in dire straits with nothing to export. Um, It's coming out uh, into the uh, alternative community that the kinds of people who enjoy government are mostly psychopaths and that's not good for us and that's been going on for a few thousand years and became a serious problem at the time of the invention of metal weapons and the possibility of mass production of weapons. There's a time in history where before that there are very few weapons found and then suddenly lots of weapons and with lots of weapons you can uh, outfit an army like the armies in the Fellowship of the Ring movies for example and go and beat up the farmers and take their territory and tax them and this is done by psychopaths who just have to have control over large areas of the world. There hasn't been enough work done on uh, psychopaths uh, that we have a definitive answer on what it is or what causes it. Uh, the kindest thing to say about them is I know that if uh, the mother is under extreme stress while she's having a baby that alters the hormonal balance with the child and the child comes out ready for a hostile environment and they say that psychopaths have a thinner cerebral cortex than normals so maybe this is just a response to stress uh, producing kind of a warrior ant kind of human uh, that needs to be investigated on many levels but uh, it behooves us to remove the stress from pregnant women and if you're a pregnant woman in a stressful relationship. You need to get out. <laughs> I used to do counseling of uh, uh, distressed uh, young women and they're always hanging on to a bad boyfriend and every time when they finally got rid of the guy, the next guy along was Prince Charming. And it's the holding on that prevents that person from coming in to your life, in my opinion, from what I saw. There will of course be uh, an exception to that which you may bring forward and say but, but, but. Case after case I saw 
after the big flood of tears and my life will never be the same and my life is over <laughs> they run into some wonderful guy who sweeps in and takes care of them some of the traits of psychopaths are uh, they think they're smarter than other people they have a high need to have the best of everything and they see others as weak because other people can be manipulated through fear and emotions which uh, they're less familiar with uh, emotions I think they still have fear but Uh, along the lines of greet the old boss the same as the new boss because the new boss will just be a different psychopath. I have a little article here from uh, a Christian paper, a Christian post. Um, I'm finding that the, the Christian papers are like an alternative news source, like Al Jazeera is an alternative news source. They have some uh, pretty good journalism in these things, and I'd like to read this to you. This is about Timbuktu. I, uh, Timbuktu is, used to be, uh, I don't know what it was, uh, winding up and taking, where, where, where are you going, Timbuktu, a place in the middle of nowhere. It turns out it's in... Uh, Mali, which is part of uh, my mind's gone blank. Anyway, it's the the deposed dictator uh, in northern Africa. It's his his country. This place is uh, a beautifully preserved Islamic castle-like city, uh, five or six hundred miles from the capital. Timbuktu has been transformed into a ghost town after being deserted by radical Islamists and locals who once occupied the area. Timbuktu in northern Mali was left without electricity and drinking water for numerous days recently according to local reports and it appears that has sparked a massive exodus from the town. One local official, Mokhtar Old Kerry, has reported to media, there is no water, the people have left, and the Islamists too. It's a ghost town. A French-guided military campaign was recently launched in the area to oust the militant Islamic extremists controlling the area, and it appears as though that offensive has led to the interruption of electricity and water supplies to Timbuktu. It is believed that the Islamic extremists have fled the area and are regrouping in the region of Gadal, according to USA Today. Some reports have suggested that the Islamists were controlling the supply of water and electricity to the town, and when they fled due to the military offensive against them, there was no one to take control of those supply routes. It is thought that French air raids destroyed the Islamist fuel stocks, sparking them to flee. And this is the interesting part. A mansion that used to belong to former Libyan dictator, Umar Gaddafi, so that's the location it's in Libya, had been taken over by the Islamic extremists who were using it as a kind of base. However, French offensives are said to have destroyed that mansion on the weekend. I wonder what these people, um, Islamic extremists, uh, supposedly uh, very religious, are doing in the mansion. Greet the old boss the same as the new boss. How come they're not in uh, tents or uh, in a hotel if there is one? They're taking over the uh, highest quality building in the city. 
Timbuktu lies 560 miles from the capital of Mali and is known to have been a center for Islamic learning for centuries. Well, this, uh, in my mind, ties in with the uh, psychotics uh, believe they deserve the best of everything and uh, feel a need to be in control and don't mind using horror to get it. Now, the third part of this is uh, why you can't get your friends interested in these kinds of things that I talk about. And the reason is your friends have been tortured in past lives for fighting back against the psychopaths. And they have done things just in the last few thousand years and you can see how they work. There's one story about the uh, expansion of the Christian Empire where they were going through a Muslim area and anyone who wouldn't convert was blinded and they left one person sighted so that he could guide all of those blind people to the next town as a warning what, what would happen when the Christians get there. Or um, things like it's possible to skin a person alive, apparently I've heard of that. That That is probably really painful. And then they throw salt on you and the salt, if you ever had salt in a cut, it stings, slowly eats into your flesh and uh, there's probably lots of screaming and flailing. And this would be done in front of the crowd to teach them what happens when they uh, think about revolution against the psychopathic overlords and the uh, unspoken past life memory in the spiritual being is what prevents people from wanting to look in that direction. Uh, to get out of this uh, everyone has to go as a group so everyone has to uh, confront this new-ish information and uh, the powers that be I think are noticing the uh, alternative media exposing their game and that's why uh, gun control is up. I live in Canada and in the last two and a half years we've had attempts at gun control or at least gun registry and uh, I'm 66 and this never happened in the last uh, 60 years. It was never talk of gun control in this country but we now have a new world order type of prime minister and things have become New World Order-ish in Canada. Apparently per capita we have the same number of guns as the Americans. Uh, we just don't use them on each other in the shopping malls and drive-by shootings and uh, things like that. But the uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, who are actually British soldiers, uh, as well as the Federal Police, they take two or three oaths, are uh, trying to find out where all the guns are because I think they're being told it's a possibility that the public may become aware of this kind of information and want a really big change, which means a change in all the tax money going to uh, the people above us rather than to make the country a better place. Now, up here in Canada we have three senators who've been suspended without pay uh, pending the completion of their investigation in, into uh, misuse of expense accounts. <laughs> um, 
the Senate things them in me says this is probably just show business. Uh, we have uh, a Senate where people are appointed by the prime ministers, and it's a lifetime appointment. And uh, what it's supposed to be is a little bit of a break against uh, wild changes in legislation that the parliament might pass. It's supposed to be older and wiser heads uh, taking a look at what's being proposed and make sure there aren't any hidden damages that the more youthful members hadn't considered. But uh, the feeling is it's more like a reward for good service. You get this lifetime appointment to the Senate. And uh, even if it is just uh, political show biz, um, this is like a, a salesman with a padded expense account. Uh, they've been called to task in public for this and, and suspended without pay. So this is a good kind of thing. They didn't do anything particularly bad, but uh, still broke the rules, and the whole country is discussing this even to, and it has been the point for quite a while that the Senate might be abolished, which might be a good thing. It might not be. Maybe the whole point is to get rid of the Senate so the New World Order types can slam through a bunch of rapid changes without being held up by older and wiser hands. So uh, occasionally we, we see good things happen like uh, Obamacare being held up, uh, the British Parliament saying no we are not going to go into Syria. May just be show business, may not. I'm uh, told that things actually are going to get better uh, to the point where you could say you won't recognize this place, meaning this planet, after not too long a time. I don't want to speculate on how long, but it's not going to be centuries. Now that we got past uh, 2012 and uh, CERN and uh, other false flag disasters, the um, current financial crisis is uh, something that normally happens in the life of the stock market and banks. Uh, it's bigger this time because there's a much bigger population, much more money involved, and there are more mortgages and things called derivatives that never existed before. However, this is a natural thing. There's a, a book was written by a very famous economist predicting this, and the statistics are identical. The stock market repeats. And this thing was predicted and is happening <laughs> as predicted. And there will be a fall and there will be a recovery. So it's, it's not the end of the world. And it's been uh, spun into the end of the world. And there's going to be a big crash and we'll all start to death and be taken back to the Stone Age. That's not true. Uh, you may have to learn uh, <laughs> uh, how to be Scottish, which is being frugal for a while, but we will carry on. If you can find a way to uh, directly assist anyone in the third world. That would be a good thing. Uh, President Clinton was here in Vancouver speaking and he choked up when he said that people, you, the public people, have more chance to do something good on a global scale 
than ever before, and it was never needed more than now. So uh, if you can find uh, a charity or a green effort that will actually uh, extend out of the richer countries into the uh, have not nations, that would be more important than you might think. So one time in the news when I was much younger I saw a news program and what it was was Globe Masters, which is the biggest plane there is, delivering food to a country in Africa. And this is the same size of planes that would normally be bombing someplace. And I think it tears in my eyes. They're just landing one after the other with literally thousands of tons of food for an area that was experiencing a famine. And we, as the human race, can do that. And the only thing that prevents that is some uh, humanitarian humanism and a philosophy of extending a helping hand to strangers. Who, after all, are just you in another body.